racing. And he's um, come to the studio this morning and a bit apprehensive, a bit nervous of what's going on. He's uh, just started his career as, a, as an apprentice jockey and making big waves in the racing industry. And uh, Luke, nice to have you here in the studio. And it's a bit fortuitous because you actually got injured on Saturday, so you're not able to ride work. What happened? Um, thanks, Mr. Goodman. Uh, yeah, on Saturday was my first ride of the day. Um, I went to jump on my first ride, and it's first time, and it kicked out, and, and it caught me on my leg. And you carried on riding for through the day? Yeah, I did. So, um, I was able to finish the meeting, and then the swelling got a bit worse, <clears throat> and the pain, and I wasn't able to ride on Sunday, but it's all better now. Getting better? Yes, sir. Well, you rode a cracker on a horse on Saturday. Just talk us through it. The RT, the filly of um, the Maroons. I think you've ridden before, you won on her before, but that was an amazing race. Uh, yeah, so the, the, um, well, the, the long time leader, um, he had a, he had, she had raced against him before, and he did the same thing, but um, yeah, he never. She, he really stretched out the field his last run, and um, Arto could never really catch him in his last run, but this time um, we opted to just take a sit on her and save her up, and <clears throat> when I asked at the top of the straight, she really did quicken up well. Well, the other horses, the two of them, had gone clear. It looked like, I think it was Candace Dawson's horse and Dromedaris, Robbie Sage's horse, that just gallops, doesn't stop. And the last hundred, this filly just showed tremendous resolution. She's probably very, very gutsy, isn't she? She is. Um, it was my second win on her. Um, we did have a big weight advantage. She was only carrying 15 and a half. Um, but yeah, she really did quicken up well and impressed us all. Talking about weight, how is your weight? It, it's good, Mr. Goodman. I can ride my bottom weight for my claim, um, 52 minus a one and a half. So yeah, it's all, it's all going well. So because you're a tall lad, um, the academy obviously has always been on your radar. They weren't very keen to take you, were they? Um, I'm not too sure what, what, it, what the story was, but um, um, I was happy I could get in. Well, your measurements were wrong. They said that you're going to be too big. But there are lots of good big jockeys, aren't there? They are. Um, they, I've seen a lot of, you know, you've got the Douglas White or the tall jockeys, Lester Piggott. Um, so, yeah, those are the, the jockeys I really aspire to. Christoph Simeon, do you know him? Have yes, you sir. Met him? Yeah. He's a pretty tall boy, isn't he? And he yes, battles with his weight. It's better to be a tall jockey. Most jockeys that are champion jockeys are tall guys. Richard Hughes was another one who springs to mind for me. Growing up in Hong Kong, you obviously came across a lot of these guys who were really brilliant at their job. Um, I did. Um, watching their racing, I picked up on a lot of different racing styles. Um, the way the other boys rode, you know, you came up with the Americans riding to time, um, you know, Australian jockeys mixed with South Africans. So all, you know, I got a taste of, of everything really, you know, I learned times. Um, and yeah, I think it's all, it's all helped me in my career so far. Um, so I'm, I'm really grateful for that. And did you go to track work a lot and to, uh, see a lot of track work, ride a bit of work there before you came here? I was never allowed to ride work, but um, I used to wake up um, in the morning with my dad and you know, I'd, get, I'd go to track in my school clothes um, and my mom and I always used to get in arguments because I'd always be late for school getting stuck at the yard um, but yeah that's where I really got hooked on it. But school um, came in two parts because you did school in Hong Kong yes. and then but you were at school here as well weren't you? When I was 10 I came back to boarding school. And tell us about that. Um, yeah, I suppose it's helped me a bit um, with the academy being a boarding school facility. Um, but yeah, it was it was all, it was all right. St Andrews, Grahamstown, yes. that's where you were. Yeah, but that good school. Yes, sir. Now apparently you could play rugby. I did. I played a lot of sport there: um, hockey, rugby, cricket. Um, there was a lot of sporting facilities. And and you enjoy sport. Yes, sir. So what did you think of the rugby on Saturday? Um, well, I didn't watch too much of it because um, of racing, racing, but yeah. Um, yeah, a bit disappointed. <laughs> Get beaten, very disappointing, yeah. wasn't it? Going back to your childhood, Luke, and you know, obviously you're born in a family that's steeped in racing, but, uh, and your mother was a very good horsewoman. Yes, sir. 
You know she rode in a race. Yes, uh, I saw some of the pictures. Um, yeah, I've, I think I couldn't have asked for a better grounding. Um, just, you know, when Dad and Granddad were there, sitting on the couch listening to the conversations about racing, it all, it all really captivated me. Um, you know, just wanting to be involved in it and and then now riding for Grand, you know, we sit and have a conversation. I say, but and, and I tell them I've ridden that horse, and you know, it's it's all I've I've really been really blessed with the grounding I've had, and the advice and criticism I get back from them, and you know, it's, it's all it's it's really helped me a lot. A lot of criticism. Good, yes. <laughs> the criticism, it's it's all about how you take it, really. Um, there are you know many people know them as hard men in racing. And you know they are, but they they they're men that don't they they tell you straight how it is, and they don't lie or they don't they tell you the truth. Yeah, so you know exactly where you stand with them. Yes, 100%. Well, your granddad uh, must have been pretty impressed with you when you rode your first winner for him. It was a big weight off the shoulders, really. Um, <laughs> I still remember flying up for the meeting and my first ride for my grandfather, and all the stories being told about you know, coming back to the box and running second or doing something you shouldn't have. But yeah, it was really, it was a storybook tale. My first ride from was a winner and um, my second ride from was a winner as well. Yeah. So my first winner had, on the meeting was my first double as well, both for him. And I think that's really where the relationship started we, and we've been doing pretty well so far. Well, let's go and have a look at um, Luke riding his first winner for his grandfather, Ormond Ferraris at the Vol. This was a very a momentous occasion. Let's go and pick him up. Warm comes up, 1,200 metres. First of nine at the Vol, gates open, and they sprinting your way. A little like a touch slow, but for a bunch of babies, they got out pretty much in a straight line. First one to break, my dream chaser on the inside, Vivier shows pace. Up there too is Crimson Royale, Waxing Moon is in the early vanguard, Furl is on the extreme inside, and Crimson Royale tucks just in behind the leaders. Party and Main in the middle of the course on the darker blue colours, racing about two lanes from the leader. Flirty, Gertie, Gimme a Symphony. Over towards the outside, Rail Trip shows a lot of pace. That's tracked by Jailhouse Jazz. Pull Sherry and Waltz with me travel together towards the middle outside. They're both in green silks. A little luck was further back. Then we go back to Luscious Locks, Jet and Style up towards the extreme inside. Red Beach has been asked to run sixth form. La Chacha are towards the outside. 400 meters left to go. Vivier's in front. Rail Trip towards the outside. Then comes Paul Sheria. Further back to Crimson Royale. Furler. Then comes Jailhouse uh, Jazz. They've got about three to four lengths to make up, but Vivier's in front. Rail Trip towards the outside. Then comes Jailhouse Jazz. My Dream Chaser is further back, but Vivier is in the lead. Rail Trip nearest us is having a go with Crimson Royale, Vivier is just the leader. Vivier did it for Luke Ferraris. Second to Rail Trip, then came Crimson Royale. Jailhouse Jazz was next. Well, he watched that replay. No stick, just hands and heels. Did you go a bit early? Um, he had always stressed to me that, and with any other horse I've ridden for him, to wait for the 400. And, um, yeah, I suppose I got a bit excited there, but um, she really, I've, I've struck up a relationship with that filly. Um, so she's won two now, and I've, I've ridden it to victory twice now. Um, but yeah, she's, she, I think she's a special filly. She could be a classic filly. She looks like she's got a lot of potential. She has. Um, she, her only issue is she gets a bit uptight before the races. Um, but yeah, she, she has a lot of ability. Going back to your childhood, and um, you know, Obviously, as I said, I've known your family for a long, long time. You, you really enjoy nature and that type of thing. Game reserves and that, you spend a lot of time there? Yeah, a lot of our holidays, um, you know, well, a lot of my friends from my old school, they had a lot of game farms and hunting farms. Um, but I remember our holidays in the Kruger Park, and those are always a classic. Um, we used to love going up there and in the game drives. And yeah, so we've always been involved with animals. They tell me that you you know a bit about birds. That would be my mom. She's a she's more of the bird expert than me. Um, yeah, she's. she's but really she loves going to the game farm as well. Yes. Now, obviously, you know, it's not only your your immediate family that are in racing, but your uncle and aunt got the stud farm. Have you ever been up there? You spent a lot of time up there. 
We did um, Christmases we used to spend up there. Um, we, were, we, got, we got a lot of good memories up there. Um, yeah, we... I remember when we were young, we used to go... My, me and my sister, we used to go um, when it was fowling season. And we would sit with the night guard and wait for them to fall. And, um, yeah, those are great memories. Clifton Stud. Yes. It's a great place, isn't it? A beautiful, yes. beautiful farm. Lovely farm. And, you know, uh, Peter was a racehorse trainer. Mm. I think he used to train at the Vol. Yeah, him and I started together. <laughs> he was a polo player as well. Yes, sir. He was a very good polo player, Peter Bly. Yeah. So, you know, there's, the family is steeped in, um, in the horse tradition. Did you ever, ever go playing polo? No. Um, <laughs> I've, I, used, I used to ride ponies and pony school and all of that, but I never, I never got to polo. I hear that uh, there's a story about you on the beach um, where you really were flapping your arms around. So obviously that, your father probably gave you a clip around the ear and said, don't do that because you're nice and balanced now. <laughs> um, yeah, that was in Bali. Um, we went for a holiday and there was beach riding. And um, I, I remember there was an, an ex-race horse there that they had and I asked if I could ride that. Because I I was, that was when I'd been going to track and I had the idea in my mind of of becoming a jockey and um, yeah, and they put me on her and we went out onto the beach and we started riding and slowly I started pulling my irons up and no one could notice and they got high and high and then I asked if they could take me off the lead rein and they did and yeah that's that's when we had, had a bit of fun. Um, my mum didn't think it was too fun but afterwards we all had a laugh. So, so how long have you actually been in the saddle Luke? Have, or Basically, since you were very young. Um, from when I can remember, really. Um, I, yeah, I always remember horses being a part of my life. Um, going to the stables and just being around them. It's it was always what I used to do for fun, and riding especially. That was my that was my main source. Your your sister is she involved? I know she's a big fan of yours. She is. She's very up to date with the racing of my and my dad's. Um, she's yeah. She she really is interested in racing, and um, she she reads the race well. She can she picks out things that sometimes my dad and I miss. Um, so yeah, everyone in the family is involved in it. And your mom obviously got a pretty good idea too. Yes. Yeah. Of what's going on. You you like animals? That's patently clear. And um, I hear you you're allowed an animal at at uh, the academy, which is very unusual. <laughs> Um, yeah, um, Mr. Rivlin's brought a dog into the academy and, um, yeah, he's, he sort of stuck to me and he's been with us ever since. So he's, yeah, he's a new addition. It was a stray, apparently. Yes, yeah. Stray dog and you've given it a home. Yes. What's it called? Uh, his name's George. George. Yeah. Now, uh, apparently uh, Lafferty calls you Dick Francis. How did that come about? Um, my f I won't forget, my first day at track, uh, my mom had told me about Mr. Lafferty and, and him being a character and I saw him you know, towering over everyone and I, I recognised him and I thought I'd better go and introduce myself. And I went up to him and I was, it was my first day at Summerfelt and I was a bit shy and I went to greet him and you know, him being up there and I was, being, I was down below his knees and I went to say hello and he, he, I don't know if he couldn't hear me or if he was just having a laugh but yeah, he, he called me Dick Francis and it stuck with me ever since. Yeah, he says that he said, what's your name? He said, who for all? And he thought that sounded like Dick Francis. Yeah, he <laughs> said I mumbled, but to me I was shouting. Because, <laughs> well, he's quite a long yeah, way up, Because he, he was up in know? the clouds, I was... <laughs> he, he thought I was mumbling. Did you get a ride for him? Um, I have, I think I've had one. Yeah, but you can get to see him at work in the morning. Yes, yeah. He's the only guy you'll see in the winter that wears shorts. And slops. On the cold. Well, if you get as much hair as he's got, that's why you would wear shorts. Yeah, he's got so his he's, own blanket. He's got a built-in jacket. <laughs> um, Terry, Sean Terry, he's latched onto you. I've been fortunate with the support of Mr. Terry. Um, you know, when Lyle Hewitson was out, when he was injured, Mr. Terry offered me a few rides and... I wrote a few winners for him and it's, it's, he's, give, he's continued to give me some support and I've been very grateful for it. Um, I, I thoroughly enjoy riding for Mr. Terry. Um, I enjoy his horses, uh, his preparation and yeah, we got, a, we got a, a few nice babies coming through. Luke, this all started when? A year ago? Uh, just over a year ago? 
Yeah, um, last year, January, was when I came to the academy. Um, then my first year, uh, I got the track fairly quick. And then late November, I had my first few rides. Um, then it was December, and while well, you're still qualifying, you, you're not allowed to ride through December, which was a bit of a, a hard one to take for me, because I just, I had nothing else on my mind, but you know, you taste it for the first time, and you want to find your first winner and ride your first winner, and so it, it gets a bit addictive. Um, then we came back, I had an um, incident at Ashburton with um, the zebra near the track, and so that put me out for about six weeks. What did you do? You did your wrist or something? Yeah, I was galloping, I jumped horse out for um, Mr. Gatsby, and the zebra were right near the track, and the horse ducked. And so that, that landed me out for six weeks, and then, yeah, when I came back, it, it all went to So play. basically, from February till now, you've lost, you've ridden, what, 40 winners? Um, no, I'd say I've ridden about my full, because February think? was when I read Road Revere, yeah. around there. So I've ridden about, I've ridden 51 now. 51, yeah. Yes. You got to a one and a half claim. Yes. So you've ridden 51 winners in 10 months. Who do you... Lyle Hewitson's obviously the boy that everyone wants to get on top of. Mm. Is he the old man that you've got a target on his back? <laughs> um, obviously the record Lyle's set, it's... it's I'd, it'll be hard to, to catch him. Um, but yeah, it's just taking it one step at a time. The academy's obviously, you're used to this type of thing, but um, you know, they're, they're a great setup, and um, certainly they produce many wonderful jockeys, and uh, you look like you're in line to join them. Yeah, um, the riding masters do a great job there. Um, Mr. O's been a big supporter of mine, Mr. Donoghue. Um, but yeah, they've, they've been supportive of me. Well, Luke, you know, it's fantastic having you on the show. Um, our time is up. We wish you everything of the best, and we know that you're going to get right to the summit. Hong Kong, is that where you'd like to ride? You don't want to ride for your father. He chops jockeys and changes jockeys too much. You'd, you'd rather find someone like, um, you know, maybe one of the other guys. Um, yeah, that'd, that'd be the main goal, really. Um, I'd like to get experience elsewhere. Um, Australia, I'd, I'd love to ride there. Um, but yeah, Hong Kong will be the main goal. But um, before I get there, I'd love to, you know, ride more winners here and and elsewhere, and gain as much experience. Because because of the international setup that there is there, I think it'll be it'll be an advantage to me if I could ride in other parts of the, of the world before going there. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Luke Ferraris, there's a man you keep on your radar. He comes from a family steeped in racing, and not only they're steeped in racing, they've been fantastic for South African racing. His father, Orman, uh, his grandfather, Orman, I've known him since I was a child. Uh, he started training in 1952. David's been going since 1995, and he's only just getting there. And um, young Luke, we'll watch him with interest, and uh, thanks to him for coming on the show, and we hope that you've enjoyed the show. Until next week. Have a good one. Your world of winners is now online at www.teletrack.com. Simply subscribe to log into your account from any mobile device in South Africa and access a wide variety of content from our membership package options. Listen in via a live audio stream, catch live racing locally and internationally, or view a wide variety of Teletrack magazine shows to stay informed and updated on the go at any time. It's never been easier. Go to teletrack.com now.